In this video we'll see how to find inverse Laplace transforms uh, giving the results as convolution integrals. Um, if we look here in red I've given the definition of convolution and in blue is the convolution rule that tells us that the Laplace transform of a convolution of two functions is the product of the uh, Laplace transforms of the individual functions. So let's look at the example we have here where we're finding the inverse transform of 5 over s to the third times the quantity s plus 4. Now ordinarily we would just do uh, a partial fractions decomposition of this in order to uh, come up with the inverse transform, but here what we want to do is, is um, see how to express such an inverse transform as a convolution. So um, the first thing we want to do is take that 5 over s to the third plus s um, plus s plus over excuse me 5 over s to the third times s plus 4 and split that into two separate fractions. So let's look at it like this. Um, we'll just say 5 over s to the third s plus 4 is equal to and um, let me just put the 5 um, out in front here times 1 over s to the third times 1 over s plus 4. Okay. And what we'd like to do is, is look at the uh, 1 over s to the third as being the Laplace transform of something and the same with the 1 over s plus 4. But the problem is um, if we want to do the inverse transform of s to the third we'd like to have a 2 factorial on top so I'll just put uh, 5 halves times 2 over s to the third in order to make that uh, ready to go for an inverse transform and then times 1 over s plus 4. So now what we're looking at here is um, the 2 over s to the third we'll think of as f of s and the 1 over s to the fourth uh, we'll, we'll think of as g of s. Okay, so then the inverse transforms of those two functions, the little f of t, would be um, t squared. And little g of t would be e to the minus 4t. So we have our two functions, little f and little g of t, and now the only thing left to do is put those into um, a convolution integral. So the inverse Laplace transform of 5 over s to the third times the quantity s plus 4 is equal to the integral from 0 to t um, we have that factor of 5 halves, which I could have put outside the integral. In fact, let's do that. Uh, let's see. Let's erase this stuff. So let's put 5 halves out here. Integral 0 to t. And now we need a f of t minus tau. So that's going to be t minus tau quantity squared. And then g of tau, so that'll be e to the minus 4 tau d tau. And so we found the desired inverse transform um, as a convolution integral. Let's look at a couple more examples. Um, our next example here, we want the inverse transform of 3s over the quantity s squared plus 16 squared. So let's rewrite that fraction. Um, let's take the three out to the front. Let's see, let me just rewrite the whole thing. Okay, so we'll drop the three off the front and then we will put um, we'll put s over s squared plus 16 and then times 1 over s squared plus 16. We can see that the first fraction is in the correct form uh, to be a, a Laplace transform of a cosine function. And the second one would be in the correct form to be 
um, a transform of a sine function if we had a, a, f a 4 on top. So actually let's just change that 1 to a 4 and we can do that by putting a 4 underneath the 3 out in front. So now we have 3 fourths times s over s squared plus 16 times 4 over s squared plus 16. So now uh, if we look at this again in red here what we have is that f of s is s over s squared plus 16 and if we look at the other fraction we have g of s equals 4 over s squared plus 16 so little f of t is the cosine of 4t and little g of t is the sine of 4t. So therefore the Laplace transform that we're trying to find or the inverse transform, the inverse transform of 3s over quantity s squared plus 16 squared is equal to the integral from 0 to t. All right, now we need f of t minus tau, so we have cosine of 4 times t minus tau. And then that's times the sine of 4 tau d tau. All right, so that completes that example. Now, as I stated earlier, Okay, so there was a bit of a glitch there in that. I'm not, I'm not sure where this is going to pick up. I had a little trouble with my recording uh, program. But here we're looking at the inverse transform of uh, an unknown function h of s over s plus 2. This shows us the real uh, power and utility of the convolution as an inverse transform when we have an, an unknown sort of function like here. So let's rewrite the uh, h of s. And let's see, let me get my pen changed around a little bit. So we have the h of s over s plus 2. And I can, whoops, yeah, that looks all right, I guess. And I can change that to become h of s times the fraction 1 over s plus 2. All right, and I'd like to do the inverse transform of that. Um, the inverse transform of h of s, of course, um, is just going to be little h of t. And the inverse transform of this, s plus 2 is our, is, our, um, is our g of s, or 1 over s plus 2, which means that little g of t is e to the minus 2t. So now I know my two my two functions that I need to build the uh, convolution integral out of. So the inverse transform of the fraction uh, h of s over s plus 2 is equal to the integral from 0 to t of h of t minus tau. I replace the t with t minus tau. e to the minus 2 tau d tau. And that concludes our uh, video here on finding inverse Laplace transforms as convolution functions.